Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Buckeye Weekly Podcast. I am Tony Gerdeman, here as always with Tom Orr. Tom, how's it going? Oh, Tony, you know the best part of the spring game? Some might yes. say the weather, some might say the opportunity to go out and experience a lovely day in Ohio Stadium or just to see football. No, no, Tony, the best part of the Ohio State spring game is right now, this, right here. It is our most stupidest show of the year. We get to only do it so few times every year. It is our bold prediction show. Tony, in the immortal words of Bart Scott and a gift that you see all the time, can't wait. Can't wait. Can't wait. Um... Do you remember any of your bold predictions from last spring? I assume they were all correct. I assume it was Kyle McCord will end up at Syracuse this time next year. Hmm. Um, that, uh, hmm. I don't know, Colonel Tate will have exactly the number of receiving yards he would have uh, that he ended up having. Brandon you know Miss will average 64 yards per catch during the regular season. I mean, I assume it was all that kind of stuff, right? Is that is that is that correct? Well, just for the spring game, I will tell you, one of yours was that... Uh, Kyle McCord will have no better than 57% completion percentage. Now, I'm not going to tell you whether that was correct or not. Uh, one of mine was Caleb Brown would have at least six catches. I don't remember if that was correct. It probably was. But it is bold predictions for a spring game, which is the most important kind of bold prediction you can make. This is a, a different kind of research. Now, I personally have pulled up the box scores from every spring game since 2018 so that I can check you on your work, Tom, as you try to get something past me. And that's just, um, you know, we're going to start out the year well. And and the winner of this, or I should say the loser of this, um, the, ne the next road trip we take will be to uh, Big Ten Media Days. That's going to be a three-day thing. Two nights, maybe three nights. So... Maybe there's something riding on this. Who's to say? Maybe. I'll let you know after I find out if I won. Yeah, exactly. I will p point out, I, I also went back and pulled up some past uh, spring game box scores. I did not go back quite as far as you did. Mm -hmm. But I will say, of all the things that you do well, out of those two, I think that you maximizing the SEO on Ohio State spring game box scores is your best is your best trait yet. If you want to know where Tony was working during any given year, just Google year Ohio State spring game box score, mm -hmm. and it will always come up with whatever site it was. It was, uh, you know, so this year, you know, obviously last year was a Buckeye huddle, but yeah, go, you want to go back to the 2019 Ohio State spring mm -hmm. game box score at the Ozone. I, I it did not go back to 2018, but Tony, I believe in you. I'm sure that comes up with the top result being the Ozone as well. In fact, it does. But I don't want to pat myself on the back just yet. We've got an entire show where I can do that. So um, now this show is probably also titled 14 Bold Predictions about Jeremiah Smith. But I'll let you go first. Well, so, yeah, and that's that's the first one, because I'm going to start with this one. And I feel like this is one that's going to get negotiated up in one way or another, because I'm sure you have something similar as well. Jeremiah Smith has a reception of 50 plus yards. Now, this is one of these things that during a regular season game, if you picked one, you know, normally it's like the team will have one reception mm -hmm. of 50 plus yards. So to pick one player to have a reception of 50 plus yards during a regular season game would be maybe a two or even three pointer. I feel like you're going to look at this and go, only one, only 50, please. Tony, your thoughts. I also have a Jeremiah Smith. I only kept kept it to one, but it's later on. My only issue with this is that it, yes, any one player having a 50-yard catch is bold. Jeremiah Smith is not any one player this spring. Like, this is just what he does when he, he's, he's Willie Mays Hayes rolling out of bed, running a 4-2, you're catching 60 yards, you know, right out of the dorm room. However, it's a big play, and, and so we're going to have to allow it. But this might be the last time we ever get to use to use this one. So <laughs> make the most of it because it might never be allowed again. And that's that's from you or me, I think. Yeah, I, I feel like by the end of the year, we might be, you know, if things proceed as they certainly seem to maybe be on a trajectory to be, it's going to be like, all right, he's going to have a reception of at least 127 yards. 
and he has to take off his helmet and catch the pass in his helmet. And it, you'll be like, I don't know if that's worth two points. Uh, uh, maybe. To be like, and he has to save some children from a fire. And then I'll rewind the vi video and be like, no, he's putting the children into the fire. <laughs> My first one, Tom. Now going back the long, illustrious history of Ohio State spring games from yet last year until 2018. The uh, no at no time in there and probably before then ever did was there ever a game where four quarterbacks threw a touchdown in a spring game. So that is my bold prediction: four quarterbacks, at least four quarterbacks, throw a touchdown or catch a touchdown. So like a ca a caught touchdown is the same as a as a, a thrown touchdown because I don't want to lose out on this because instead of uh, Lincoln Keenels throwing a touchdown, it's getting a Philly special thrown to him. So uh, four quarterbacks throwing or catching touchdowns. I think just the fact that you are throwing out Ohio State burns a bunch of razzle-dazzle in the spring game as something that you're thinking could happen. I think mm -hmm. that in and of itself makes it bold. But yes, four quarterbacks throwing or catching a touchdown is a is a very good one. That, that's another one where, I again, I went, I went back through a bunch of these box scores and I'm like, what's a reasonable expectation here? Is someone going to throw two touchdowns? I'm like, Basically, no one ever throws two touchdowns in the spring game. You're not, you're just not in there long enough. And with five quarterbacks being in there, they're going to be trying to churn through everybody. So, you know, you have you have a chance here, but it's not as good of a chance as you probably listening at home you might think it is. Hmm. All right, so Tony, since we have now established there's going to be five scholarship quarterbacks and any you know any number of walk-ons potentially playing as well. If I was to pick one player to be the leading passer in terms of yardage, that would be fairly bold to pick that person out of the five to seven possible candidates. I mean, <laughs> it feels bold to me. I'm going to say, oh, I don't know. Um, how about Julian Sayan? Let's say Julian Sayan is the leading passer in terms of yardage during the Ohio State spring game. Uh, here's a couple of things. For one, it's bold to pick out a true freshman to lead the, the game in passing yardage. However, we're still not sure how much are Devin Brown and Will Howard going to play. I assume, I assume quite a bit, but maybe they don't, which then lends itself to your bold prediction, which could just be a, a prediction by uh, default, which is the worst kind of bold prediction, <laughs> unless it's mine. So, so what I'm hearing is, we don't know how much the quarterbacks are playing, but it's bold to pick a true freshman to lead. So this is, so are you saying two points? Is that what I'm hearing? Or No, I, I'm just saying, I'm going to allow it. I'm just telling the listeners and the viewers, eh, let's come on, grain of salt here. Like, is this really bold? It's like, no, but we're going to allow it. It's spring. It's the time for our renewal, rebirth, uh, planting seeds that maybe later on will sprout. Hey, I know you're saying this, this prediction against Western Michigan or whomever isn't bold, but remember, when I let the Julian Sayan bold prediction go in spring. And this will be like right before the trip to Oregon or whatever, where the, the kind of shame is really, really in play there. And you definitely don't want to, because we're staying at a hostel. So it's already going to be bad. I don't know what the kind of shame is at a hostel. I think it's probably bushes out back. So uh, just keep that in mind. Plenty of stakes this year. Anyway, so um, that was Julian Sayan leading the team and passing yards. Yards, yes. All right, my next one. There will be at least a one interception from a first or second year cornerback. I think that's a, that's a good one. And I went back and looked. There have not been a lot of turnovers in these spring games over the last few years. And we'll, I, have, I have something about that a little later on, but... I, I think that's a good one. Uh, an interception by a first, you said a first year cornerback or first or second year? First or second. First or so, second year. So yeah. basically no one, a cornerback because Davis and Igbenosian and Denzel Burke are not going to play and they have a lot of very talented corners. So honestly, we've seen walk-ons get, get interceptions as well, like fourth year walk-ons. Mm -hmm. So I'm not, I'm mm -hmm. taking those off the table. No interceptions So, so walk-ons don't year. count? First or, first or second year cornerback no. walk-ons don't count? No, I said you, we've seen fourth year walk-ons get interceptions mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. so i'm saying like there's that opportunity you know, don't just say it's denzel burke or davis and benos and there's many more out there I, mm -hmm. i'm just taking one small patch saying hey maybe maybe these guys mm -hmm. maybe these 
five guys, all of whom have been, uh, yeah, that's fine. That's Tony. It's picking a particular unit to do a particular thing, you know, to have an interception in the spring game, given the fact that there have not been a lot of turnovers mm -hmm. in the spring games recently, because there are not as many snaps as you think in these games. Cause it's like, well, it's four, a four quarter game. It's like, well, is it, is it really? Cause it's, not, it's really about a three quarter game. And so, yeah, I, I will allow this one. This is, uh, you know, this is another one. I mean, if you want to, if you want to give me grief for the uh, Julian Sane one, you know, in your opinion, incorrectly, but in your opinion, not mm -hmm. being as bold as you might think. When you look at the body of, uh, you know, the, the, the number of people you have to choose from in terms of the cornerback room and the percentage of snaps that those first and second year corners are going to play uh, on Saturday, this is not quite as bold as it might as it might seem, but that's OK. Beg to differ. Next. All right. Next up, Tony. Uh, we're assuming Jeremiah Smith will probably be starting, correct? Perhaps. Perhaps. Okay. So it would be remarkable if the defense were to not give up four touchdowns in the first four drives, right? I mean, all things considered. So, Tony, how about this? The defense forces three and outs or turnovers on three of the first four possessions. I can't say no to that. I mean, that's... Um... That's pretty good. So three three and outs in the first four possessions or turnovers. Three three and outs or turnovers in the first four possessions. Now, I have no idea whether that is actually bold in the spring game because I'm I'm not going to go back and look by play by play. But it just seems like, really, you can't get a first down in two drives, essentially. But you know what's going to happen. Now, so they can drive, an offense can drive 96 yards down the field, 17 first downs but end with a fumble at the goal line. And that's going to count for you. That, so your question is, what is a turnover? Is that your question? I feel like we've been doing this show for a while. I think we, I think what is a turnover is pretty well established in uh, Buckeye Weekly Canon at this point. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And I, and I said that knowing exactly you're going to, you're going to pull out. So you're asking what a turnover is. Yes. Um, we have been doing this show a long time. So three, three knots are turnovers in the first four drives. That's that's okay. We'll take that um, and go from there. Where to go next? I'm I'm gonna stick here with uh with one that I wonder if I did this one last year. Let me see. Hmm. Mm. No, I did not. But it was close. C.J. Hicks will account for at least three impact plays. And let's define for the listeners what yep. an impact play is. Tackle so for loss. Is it a tackle for loss? A sack. Uh, Broken pass, interception, fumble recovery, forced fumble, uh, intimidating stare. Yes, yes. QB hurries not considered a. No. Okay, just I just want to make sure we're mm -hmm. entering the year all on the same page. Three is three is. I I think this is one where, I think it's. I think this is a a very good one on your end because he's probably going to play a bunch. I think you're going to see a lot of those younger linebackers who don't have a ton of snaps. You're probably not going to see a ton of Cody Simon, but I think you're going to see a lot of Sonny Styles and CJ Hicks and Gabe Powers and all those guys. And I think you're going to see a pretty impactful defensive day. And we've seen Jim Knowles bring pressure with those linebackers. So I think this is one that if I was going to say so far, like which one is going to happen, that seems like normally it wouldn't necessarily, you know, this would be really bold, but it seems like it's going to happen. This, this might be my pick of yours so far. So, a good one, I will allow it, but, but I think it's going to happen. Well, and I'll say it was similar to one I had last year, which was C.J. Hicks will have at least two impact plays, but that that we allowed that to be a two-pointer. So really? look how far we've come. Well, there you America. go. Um, I've got one, and I, I had you define impact plays for oh. the audience because my next one is about impact plays. Caleb Downs makes an impact play in the first quarter. Just the first quarter of the game, okay. Caleb Downs makes an impact play. I mean, <clears throat> this this is also going to be one of those, this is the last time we allow it probably. Um, and Ryan Day did say that Caleb Downs said this past week, like you can really see him starting to pick up the defense. And now that he knows that the playmaking has picked up. So um, hopefully, you know, um, I can, this feels like, 
it's not a sure thing because a lot of his tackles last year, a lot of his plays last year were just tackling a guy, you know, three yards, seven yards downfield. So we have, uh, well, we will accept this, but if there's like three, never again, never again, Tom, don't ever try this again. One thing that I think makes this one a little dicey is we don't know exactly how much of the first quarter is going to be thud, which they have talked about. And mm. you know that they may try and it's true. run the ball a bunch in the first quarter just to get Travion Henderson a few carries and not tackle him. Like that was when, when Ryan Day was talking about people he didn't want to get hit. He talked about Travion Henderson specifically. So, you know, if Travion Henderson is going to have any carries, it's going to be in the first quarter. I'm not expecting Caleb Downs to necessarily make a bunch of tackles on mm. run plays. So I think there's a way this doesn't happen. That's that's where you might get a CJ Hicks impact play, might more than a Caleb Downs in the first quarter. But just another just another factor, just to let the listeners know exactly how many things we're taking into account when we put these shows together. There's just well, there are so many variables we have to we have to consider. Variable going on in my mind right now is you'll be down on the field shooting photos. I'll be upstairs in the press box, able to influence the scorekeeping. So say there's a pass. That is either, was that pass broken up by Caleb Downs or was that a drop? You better believe I'm going over to Mike Bassford and Jerry Emig saying, dude, that well, that was a blatant drop. Downs didn't get there. Look at the replay. I'm telling you, I saw it with my own eyes. That was a drop. And, you know, we'll go from there. Fair. It's all fair. Anyway. Oh, yeah. So mm-hmm. now we have an explanation for whenever I happen to lose, whenever that might be. Now we all know how that happened. Because I'm sure the listeners are home are like, what the, what? How? What's going on? But there, there you go. There's your answer. That's only in the spring because they don't have the capability of doing live stats. So I, it's pretty much in-house stuff. So I do have some influence there. I think maybe, I don't know. I may be completely wrong. This may just be people like humoring me like, okay, all right, we got it. Thanks. Happens a lot. I'm not aware of, um, I'm not always aware of it. Anyway, happens a yeah, lot. We, in this we, show. We've got it. Thanks. Go on, chief. <laughs> all right. My next, <laughs> my next one. Back to the second year guys. Caden McDonald, Jason Moore, and Will Smith will account for at least four tackles for loss. So run me through the list again. Caden McDonald, Jason Moore, Will Smith. All second year defensive tackles. At least four tackles for loss. And they do give you half of a tackle for loss, right? So you would have mm-hmm. to have, yeah. So you could have, you could theoretically end up at three and a half. They don't just yeah. round up on that. Okay. Yes, I will allow it. I think, I mean, we we were at the student mm-hmm. appreciation practice a couple weeks ago and uh, the interior of that defensive line was extremely disruptive. And I think you're going to see a lot of those guys. And I think my biggest concern on this is not when the first team offensive line is in there, but later on, which is when a lot of these guys are probably going to be playing. I think you're going to see a lot of disruption in the middle of that line. So I think this has, uh, this is another one that has a very good opportunity to be something that hits. I just want to pull up last year's box score and see if we have eight tackles for loss in last year's game, two from a linebacker, two from hero canoe. Yeah, I mean, they had none from Yeah, they had four tackles from loss from defensive tackles last year, but you're calling your shot with these mm-hmm. specific guys, so I'm going to allow it. Boom. That's all I needed to hear. I didn't need all that blabber. <laughs> all right, Tony. How about this one? Every healthy true freshman plays at least one snap in the second half except for Jeremiah Smith. (laughs) This is so dumb. Yes, thank you. (laughs) On brand is what you meant to say, but go on. (laughs) Um, this, I don't even know how to approach this because this, this is, this should happen. Like I've, I've even told somebody like they don't need to play Jeremiah Smith past the thud you know, the the first two series or whatever it's going to be like, just put him in carbonite until fall camp and go from there. But I do think it would be a, I'm going to allow this just because of the message that it would kind of send in terms of, yeah, he's over on the sideline joking, eating hot dogs with the Mecca Buka 
and, you know, Carnell Tate or whatever, Cody Simon. So I'm going to allow it just for what it might mean. I'm not doing this for me. I'm not doing this for you. Certainly not doing it for you. Doing it for the people. So um, every healthy, true freshman plays at least one snap in the second half, except for Jeremiah Smith. And one of the reasons you feel you can be altruistic on this one is Mm -hmm. that I think you know deep down, just as I do, that we are not going back and scoring this unless we think this is there's a chance that this is the most you know the decisive play because this is going to involve checking snap counts on all of the scholarship true freshmen and you know then checking you know making sure we go through at the end of the game and if Ryan Day says oh yeah this guy wasn't on the availability report but we held him out because he was dinged or whatever so this can be a lot of different factors that go into checking this one so honestly hopefully. I assume I'm going to be up by so many that it won't matter. And I can just sort of graciously, Mm -hmm. you know, just say, you know what? We, I don't even count that one. It's okay. Enjoy the cop. My hope is that uh, Julian saying doesn't travel. (laughs) That would just knock out a couple of birds with one stone there. So, all right. My, my first, no, my last one pointer, Tom, it's a bit of a parlay. Okay. So, so bear with me. Devin Brown will have at least 120 yards passing. At least two touchdowns. Accounted for. At least 65% completion percentage. Zero turnovers. Under zero yards rushing. Under zero. That is a lot of factors there. And. Too many to say no. I'm looking at last year's stats and I feel like that's a great measure for. Yeah. I mean, it feels like 120, like I'm seeing like 127 yards on a lot of these previous Mm -hmm. quarterbacks. Like two years ago, he had 141 yards, one touchdown, one pick. Mm -hmm. That's turnover. You said he's under zero yards. Yeah. With zero turnovers as well. With zero turnovers. Yeah. This is Two one where there's just, there's so many moving parts mm-hmm. here that it feels like trying to hit all of these is probably difficult. Now, play individual player parlays are illegal in the state of Ohio. So I may have to reach out to someone at the state to just make sure this is legal. But if it is, I think I will allow it. Entertainment purposes only. Cannot stress that enough. So, all right, Tom. It is time for your first two-pointer. I can hardly wait. Tony, in the last three Ohio State spring games, oh, sorry, no, wait, yes, there have been two total turnovers, two turnovers. In the last three spring games combined, I am predicting at least three turnovers on Saturday, and we've already established Devin Brown's not going to turn the ball over. So, thoughts? I think that's pretty good. Now, I can go back to the 2019 spring game where you had there were three i believe in the 2019 one because you had um matthew baldwin throwing a couple interceptions and i so yeah i mean i'm not gonna i'm not gonna stop this one now i do believe this is a better defense than we've seen in terms of um there's like a better defense and there's more potential for turnovers from this offense because of the new players and the amount of turnover that that we've seen so i like this one as a two-pointer I'm going to allow it just because of, as you said, the history of the lack of turnovers is a thing. So at least three turnovers in the first three quarters, or uh, is this the in, full game? In the full game. But can it happen during a running clock? Nobody said that. Nobody said that. Must be on a Thursday. Offer not valid in the state of Oregon. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Let me know how, how you feel about my first two-pointer. Probably don't like it. James Peoples will have a carry of at least 17 yards. And if you look back to just last year, only two players had rushes of at least 17 yards. Chip Trainum had a 65 yarder. And of course, Archie, Archie Griffin <laughs> had a 25 yarder. So this, this doesn't happen for just anybody. You either have to be a former linebacker or a two-time Heisman winner. And I will remind you, James Peoples, neither of those things. 
So do you know on the gray team in 2019, how many of their four people had carries? Do you know how many of them had rushes of three yards or more or 17 yards or more? Um, I know that uh, at least three of them did, including a uh, walk-on running back, Robert Cope. Uh, but yes. I will remind you that 2019 defense was trash. Yeah. Mm, you might be thinking of a different one. Uh, 2022, uh, two players had rushes of mm -hmm. longer than 17 yards. Guys who largely fit the profile of where James Peoples in his, is in his career. Okay. Let, let, it sounds, uh, like 2020, sounds like you're trending no. I, I feel like I'm trending no. So uh, if you, I'll, how about this? James Peoples has a run of exactly 17 yards. Well, that's a 10 pointer. How about we just take it to the next natural progression of at least 34 yards? That feels more like a three, but it's a compromise. 30, 30, yes, yeah, 34, uh, 34 yards is good. Can I, if you wanted to say make it a touch a touch of at least 34 yards yes okay yes that, that includes throws okay if again once again if they break out the razzle dazzle in okay. the spring game i will perfect maybe he's throwing a 34 yard pass to one of the quarterbacks for a touchdown and then you're hitting and then it's just boom you're, you're just hitting everything all at once you know the great irony is that uh it's gonna be hilarious when julian sane actually leads the team in receiving yards just so you know and if he doesn't i'm sure you'll go over to mike and jerry and say listen instead of saying he threw that one what if you say he caught it mm, perfect i mean what's what's the difference really None. all right tony in the last three Ohio State spring games going back to 2021 and the last four years, if you want to, when you want to count it that way, in the last four years, the two biggest receiving days in an Ohio State spring game were Garrett Wilson, for 85 yards, and Emeka Abuka for 123 yards. Those both happened in 2021. Tony, that totals 208 yards. Tony, for three points, Jeremiah Smith meets or exceeds 208 yards receiving yards. Well, Tom, I will remind you that Devere Posey said this week that uh, Jeremiah Smith had 350 yards receiving, at least. He was probably playing in the entire practice. I'm not expecting him to play in the entire game. I mean, I'm, I had, this is, this is acceptable. Jeremiah Smith, at least uh, 208 yards receiving. Yes. I mean, that's, that's, it's not just bold, it's outrageous. But again, this for, we may not get to do these much anymore in terms of Jeremiah Smith bold predictions because at some point, the diminishing returns of the numbers that we're going to have to get to during the season, you know, five touchdown catches, it's not worth it, um, even though it will probably happen at least three times. So that was your three-pointer. I also have a three-pointer for, for, for Jeremiah Smith. And it is this, uh, Jeremiah Smith will have touchdown catches from inside and outside the 34 yard line. That's absolutely allowable. That's, those are two, two touchdown catches is pretty remarkable. I'm just going to go back through, uh, no, nobody had two touchdown catches in 23. Nobody had two touchdown catches in, uh, tw uh 19. Nobody had two touchdown catches in 22. 2018, Tom. 2018 was me, the last time. Can you tell me which Ohio State football player had two touchdown catches in 2018? I will give you the full stats. Uh, five catches, 100 yards, a long of 50 yards. Was that a C.J. Saunders? Didn't C.J. Saunders have a big spring game at some point? Um, He, he has had... Decent games. He actually had a pretty good game in 2018 in terms of a, a regular game, but no, no. This was former Ohio State running back, former Ohio State cornerback, former Ohio State H back. Oh, your favorite uh, or, or photo opportunity, Dante. Demario. Yes, Demario, Demario McCall. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So he had a like a 42 yarder and a a 50 yard 50 yarder and a 42 yarder in the fourth quarter. The 42 yarder came on the last play of the game from. One Joe Burrow. So, spring football history. There you go. Pretty good. I, I wish we had, like, 
2001 kind of box score, spring game box score is available somewhere because oh. I want to go back. I feel like the legend of Bam Childress has grown every year where, you know, he was 10 foot tall if he was an inch and he had 700 yards receiving and 52 touchdowns. And I think if you go back and look at the box score, I'm guessing if you can find one, the final score of whatever spring game that was, was probably six to three. And, you know, he had 57 yards receiving, but that's feel, felt like a lot back then. Now I do have, I did, was able to pull up the 2001 Ohio State spring game box score. Now all right. it's all in text, so it's like this is not all lining up very well. And I'm, if I look for, if I just do a con control F, Bam Childress did have a six yard touchdown pass a catch from Rick McFadden, and the he, lefty uh, out of Youngstown, yeah. So uh, three catches for twenty five yards in that one. So I'm guessing that wasn't the big one. Maybe it was two thousand two, the one where um, Maurice Claret did not play. But not a, not a great day for the quarterbacks. Uh, well, Steve Belisari, 11 for 17, 422 yards. Rick McFadden, 8 for 12, 76 yards. Andy Groom, 1 for 1 with for a loss of 1. So you say that trick plays don't come out in the spring. I tell you, Andy Groom, punter, 1 pass, loss of 1. Should have just 2002 Ohio State spring game. Bam Childress, 1 catch, 8 yards. So it wasn't that year. 2003 <laughs> well how did it how did it become this then because i'm with you it's like it was it was just this running joke um i'm checking 2000 know. right now i can't find 2003 oh there it is looks like it's just a uh photo gallery anyway i'm sure i can just look up bam childress's wikipedia it would probably be there I don't think he played in the 2000 Ohio State spring game. This is, uh, is this, you should do it. Your, your re up, re up your series on, uh, <laughs> the, the Ohio State things. Mythbusters. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Boy, I, I feel like I almost have to now. This is, I'm a little shaken right now. I don't, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if some of this stuff comes from the spring scrimmages that we were allowed to, people were allowed to go see. Um, oh, was that, oh, was that a thing you used to be able to do? Oh, really? yes, it was, in fact. So I I wouldn't I wouldn't be surprised if that's really where it, it started, because I remember being at one like Solomon Thomas had like eight sacks because it was like touch. And then he didn't quite do that in the spring game. But anyway, Tom, to the gift bold predictions, if you would. All right, let's see. So just to remind everyone, this is we give one to our opponent, which we feel is basically a freebie and it's goodwill. just a gesture of goodwill so you know sometimes last year it was like uh at least one ohio state quarterback will throw for 11 yards in the game something like that so all right uh tony i will give you this one and because we're going to use jeremiah smith ones now and we're probably not gonna be able to use them in the fall i will give you a jeremiah smith one as a sign of goodwill jeremiah smith has at least 127 yards receiving that's your freebie okay i'm you thought i will take that um, that is acceptable. Hey, hey, Tony, remember four weeks ago when we were like, we don't want to set unrealistic expectations for a true freshman. So we're going to be is, real cautious with yeah, this. And this no, is just the first half. So that's why the number is so low. All right. So yeah, I'll, I'll, how about, how about this, Tony? At least three Ohio State quarterbacks complete a pass of four yards or longer. Three QBs complete a pass of four yards. Okay. Or longer. Got to make sure we get that, get that in there. All right. So that'll, that'll work. And my uh, goodwill gesture to you, there will be at least one touch sack in this game. Okay. Quarterbacks will be off limits in terms of the uh, sacking. So the black jersey, black jerseys will be in effect, which means one or two hand touch. I think there there may be one sack in there. At least, yes, at least one is seems. From what we've seen so far this spring, that seems like that's plausible. So there you have it. How do you feel? I feel pretty good. Um, a lot of this is a bit extreme, um, but overall, that's kind of what the spring, it's supposed to be fun, right? This is not as serious, as deadly, as venomous as the regular season. This is just the spring. It's meant to be fun, um, but hopefully, Tom, you lose and you lose badly. It's always my favorite part of the any Ohio State football game is 
being on the sidelines and you being up in the press box and just texting each other back and forth with, ha ha, did you see this happen? Or did you see this not happen? And it's, uh, it is a sure sign that football is back, even if it is just the spring game. And so we will be uh, on hand Saturday for that. We will have a post game, some post game coverage. Of course, we will be um, at practice Friday morning to, uh, and in the shoe watching uh, the Ohio State football practice in the shoe, no camera, no video, but we will have a post, post-practice post thing there going live on YouTube. So if you have not yet subscribed to us on YouTube, go ahead and do that at youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. If you're watching right now and you have not hit the bell to be notified, go ahead and do that, and we'll let you know. Uh, you'll be notified when we go live and just let you know everything that we saw because we will be seeing a bunch on Friday and uh, – Probably do maybe some uh, quick previewing of uh, the spring game as well, but we will have more. So you can find that at uh, youtube.com slash Buckeye Huddle. Of course, you can always find us at BuckeyeHuddle.com. Become a member. That is the absolute best way to support what we do. So we would appreciate seeing you there. So thank you all for tuning in, and we will talk to you guys tomorrow.